Julius Caesar, Act Four, Scene Three, Brutus's Tent, Enter Brutus and Cassius. That you have wronged me doth appear in this. You have condemned and noted Lucius Pella for taking bribes here of the Sardinians, where in my letter, praying on his side because I knew the man, was cited off. You wronged yourself to write in such a case. In such a time as this, it is not meet that every nice offence should bear his comment. Let me tell you, Cassius, you yourself are much condemned to have an itching palm. To sell and march your officers for gold to underservers? I, an itching palm, you know that you are Brutus speak this, or by the gods this speech were your last. The name of Cassius honors the corruption and chastisement doth hide his head. Chastisement. Remember March, the Ides of March. Remember, did not the great Julius bleed for justice? What villain touched his body that did not stab? And not for justice? What shall one of us that struck the foremost man of all the world but for supporting robbers Shall we now contaminate our fingers with base bribes and sell the mighty space of our large honours for so much trash that may be grasped thus? I had rather be a dog and bay the moon than such a Roman. Brutus, bay me not. I will not endure it. You forget yourselves. To hedge me in, I am a soldier. I, older in practice, abler than yourselves, to make conditions. Go to, you are not Cassius. I am. I say, you are not. Urge me no more, I shall forget myself. Have mind upon your health, tempt me no further. Away, slight man. Is't possible? Hear me, for I will speak. Must I give way and room to your rash collar? Shall I be frightened when a madman stares? Oh, ye gods, ye gods, must I endure all this? All this? I more. Fret till your proud heart break. Go show your slaves how choleric you are, and make your bondmen tremble. Must I budge? Must I observe you? Must I stand and crouch under your testy humor? By the gods, you shall digest the venom of your spleen, though it do split you. For from this day forth, I'll use you for my mirth, yea, for my laughter, when you are waspish. Is it come to this? You say you are a better soldier. Let it appear so. Make your vaunting true, and it shall please me well, for mine own part, I shall be glad to learn of a noble man. You wrong me every way. You wrong me, Brutus. I said an elder soldier, not a better. Did I say better? If you did, I care not. When Caesar lived, he durst not thus have moved me. Peace, peace, you durst not so have tempted him. I durst not. No. What durst not tempt him? For your life, you durst not. Do not presume too much upon my love. I may do that I shall be sorry for. You have done that you should be sorry for. There is no terror, Cassius, in your threats. For I am armed so strong in honesty that they pass by me as the idle wind, which I respect not. I did send to you for certain sums of gold, which you denied me. For I can raise no money by vile means. By heaven, I had rather coin my heart and drop my blood from drachma than to wring from the hard hands of peasants their vile trash by any indirection. I did send to you for gold to pay my legions, which you denied me. Was that done like Cassius? Should I have answered Caius Cassius so? When Marcus Brutus grows so covetous to look such rascal counters from his friends, be ready, gods, with all your thunderbolts, dash him to pieces! 
I denied you not. I did not. He was but a fool that brought my answer back. Brutus hath ribbed my heart. A friend should bear his enemy's infirmities, but Brutus makes mine greater than they are. You love me not. A friendly eye could never see such faults. Come, Antony and young Octavius, come. Revenge yourselves alone on Cassius, for Cassius is a weary of the world. Hated by one he loved, brayed by his brother, checked like a bondman, all his faults observed, set in a notebook, learned, and conned by rote to cast into my teeth. Oh, I could weep my spirit from mine eyes. There is my dagger, and here my naked breast, within a heart dearer than Plutus mine, richer than gold. If then thou beast a Roman, take it forth. I that denied thee gold will give my heart. Strike as thou didst at Caesar, for I know when thou didst hate him worst, thou lovedst him better than ever thou lovedst Cassius. Sheathe your dagger. Be angry when you will, it shall have scope. Do what you will, dishonor shall be humor. Oh, Cassius, you are yoked with a lamb that carries anger as the flint bears fire who much in force shows a hasty spark, and straight is cold again. Hath Cassius lived to be but mirth and laughter to his Brutus, when grief and blood ill-tempered vexeth him? When I spoke that, I was ill-tempered, too. Do you confess so much? Give me your hand. And my heart, too. Oh, Brutus, what's the matter? Have you not love enough to bear with me when that rash humor which my mother gave me makes me forgetful? Yes, Cassius, and from henceforth, when you are over earnest with your Brutus, he'll think your mother chides and leave you so. Let me go in to see the generals. There is some grudge between them. Tis not meet they meet alone. You shall not come to them. Nothing but death shall stay me. How now? What's the matter? For shame, you generals. What do you mean? Love and be friends, as two such men should be, for I have seen more years, I'm sure, than, than ye. Ha, ha, how vilely doth this cynic rhyme. Get you hence, sirrah, saucy fellow, hence. Bear with him, Brutus, tis his fashion. I'll know his humor when he knows his time. What should the wars do with these jigging fools? Companion, hence, away, away, be gone. Lucilius and Titinius, bid the commanders prepare to lodge their companies tonight, and come yourselves, and bring Masala with you immediately to us. Lucius, a bowl of wine! I did not think you could have been so angry. Oh, Cassius, I am sick of many griefs. Of your philosophy you make no use if you give place to accidental evils. No man bears sorrow better. Portia is dead. Portia? She is dead. How escaped I killing when I crossed you so? Oh, insupportable and touching loss. Upon what sickness? Impatience of my absence and grief that young Octavius with Mark Anthony have made themselves so strong for with her death. The tidings came with this she felt distracted and her attendant's absence swallowed fire. And died so? Even so. Oh, ye mortal gods. Speak no more of her. Give me a bowl of wine. In this I bury all unkindness, Cassius. My heart is thirsty for that noble pledge. Fill, Lucius, till thy wine or swell the cup. I cannot drink too much of Brutus's love. Cheers. <laughs> Come in, Titinius. Welcome, good Masala. Now, we sit close about this taper here and call in questions our necessities. Portia, art thou gone? No more, I pray you. Masala, I have here received letters that young Octavius and Mark Antony come down upon us with a mighty power, bending their expedition toward Philippi. 
Myself have letters of the self same tenor. With what addition? That by proscription and bills of outlawry, Octavius, Antony, and Lepidus have put to death a hundred senators. Oh, well, therein our letters do not well agree. Mine speak of seventy senators that died by their prescriptions, Cicero being one. Cicero I Cicero is dead. And by that order of prescription. Had you your letters from your wife, my lord? No, Miss Arla. No, nothing in your letters writ of her. Nothing, Miss Arla. That, methinks, is strange. Why ask you? Have you aught of her in yours? No, my lord. Now, as you are a Roman, tell me true. Then, like a Roman, bear the truth I tell. For certain she is dead, and by strange manner. Why, farewell, Portia. We must die, Miss Arla. We're meditating that she must die once. I have the patience to endure it now. Even so, great men great losses should endure. I have as much of this in art as you, but yet my nature could not bear it so. Well, to our work alive, what do you think of marching to Philippi presently? I do not think it good. Your reason? This it is. Tis better that the enemy seek us, so shall he waste his means, weary his soldiers, doing himself offense, whilst we, lying still, are full of rest, defense, and nimbleness. Good reasons must of force give place to better. The people twixt Philippi and this ground do stand, but in a forced affection, for they have grudged us contribution. The enemy marching along by them, by them shall make a fuller number up. Come on, refreshed, new added and encouraged. From which advantage shall we cut him off? If at Philippi we do face him there, these people at our back. Hear me, good brother. Under your pardon, you must note beside that we have tried the utmost of our friends. Our legions are brim full. Our cause is ripe. The enemy increaseth every day. We at the height are ready to decline. There is a tide in the affairs of men, which, taken at the flood, leads on to fortune. Omitted all the voyage of their life is bound in shallows, and in miseries. On such a full sea are we now afloat, and we must take the current when it serves, or lose our ventures. Then, with your will go on, we'll along ourselves, and meet them at Philippi. The deep of night has crept upon our talk, and nature must obey necessity, which we will squander with a little rest. There's no more to say. No more. Good night. Early tomorrow we will rise, and hence. Lucius! My gown. Farewell, good Masala. Good night, Titanius. Noble, noble Cassius. Good night, and good repose. Oh, my dear brother, this was an ill beginning of the night. Never come such division between our souls. Let it not, Brutus. Everything is well. Good night, my lord. Good night, good brother. Good night, Lord Brutus. Farewell, everyone. Give me the gown. Where is thy instrument? Here, in the tent. What? Thou speakest drowsily. Poor knave, I blame thee not. Thou art o'erwatched. Call Claudius and some other of my men. I'll have him sleep on cushions in my tent. Baron! Claudius! Calls, my lord? I pray you, sirs, lie in my tent and sleep. It may be I will raise you by and by on business to my brother Cassius. So please you, we will stand and watch your pleasure. I will not have it so. Lie down, good sirs. It may be I shall otherwise bethink me. Uh, look, Lucius, here's the book I sought for so. I put it in the pocket of my gown. 
I was sure your lordship did not give it me. Bear with me, good boy. I am much forgetful. Canst thy hold up thine eyes a while, and touch thy instrument a strain or two? Ay, my lord, and it please you? It does, my boy. I trouble thee too much, but thou art willing. It is my duty, sir. I should not urge thy duty past thy might. I know young bloods look for a time of rest. I have slept, my lord, already. It was well done, and thou shalt sleep again. I will not hold thee long. If I do live, I will be good to thee. This is a sleepy tune. O oh, murderous slumber, laced thou thy leaden mace upon my boy that plays thee music. Gentle knave, good night. I will not do thee so much wrong to wake thee. If thou dost nod, thou breakest thy instrument. I'll take it from thee. Boy, good night. Let me see, let me see. Is not the leaf turned down where I left reading? Ah, here it is, I think. Oh, how ill this taper burns. I think it is the weakness of mine eyes that shapes this monstrous apparition. It comes upon me. Art thou anything? Art thou some god, some angel, or some devil that makest my blood cold and my hair to stare? <laughs> Speak to me what thou art. Thy evil spirit, Brutus. Why comest thou? To tell thee thou shalt see me at Philippi. Well, then I shall see thee again? Uh, I at Philippi. Well, I will see thee at Philippi. Now I have taken heart, thou vanishest. Ill spirit, I would hold more talk with thee. I'm not sure I understand. <sighs> Boy, Lucius, Varro, Claudius, sirs, awake. Claudius! Ah, the string, my lord, falls. Oh, he thinks he is still at his instrument. Lucius, awake! What, my lord? Didst thou dream, Lucius, that thou so criedst out? My lord, I do not know that I did cry. Guess that thou didst. Didst thou see anything? Nothing, my lord. Ah, oh, sleep again, Lucius. Sirrah, Claudius, <sighs> fellow, thou, awake! My lord, my lord. Why did you cry out, sirs, in your sleep? We did, my lord. Aye, saw you anything? No, my lord, I saw nothing. Nor I, my lord. Go, and commend me to my brother Cassius. Bid him set on his powers be time, before, and we will follow! It shall be done, my lord. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> 